Yellowstone volcano chaotic 2019 eruptions of Steamboat Geyser, the world's biggest geyser. The record amount of eruptions recorded this year, 2019. Norris Geyser Basin has a steamboat geyser, the biggest geyser in the world, reaching up to 300 feet, and it's been exploding almost every week of this past year. Sean Martin Express UK, concerning the U.S. Geological Survey findings, Steamboat Geyser smashed eruption records for last year, according to USGS chiefs referring to a chaotic year at the supervolcano Yellowstone. A total of 48 Yellowstone Steamboat Geyser eruptions took place last year. It's, they smashed all previous records set in 2018 of 32 eruptions, and before that the highest amount of Steamboat Geyser eruptions in the year was 29 set all the way back in 1964. Steamboat Geyser, which is the world's largest active geyser, has at points been spewing hot steam about 300 feet into the air. It's in the Norris Geyser Basin around the northwest part of uh, Wyoming. Yellowstone Volcano Observatory Chief Scientist uh, Geologist in Charge Michael Poland said this sort of classic behavior is uh, what belongs to the geyser. Poland conceded for all the opportunities to study steamboats eruption this year and experts are still unsure what's causing it to blow so often. He says it gets really chaotic when you get close to the surface. There's nothing definitive that we can tie to it and we have some ideas but it's very difficult to test them because we don't have the data that we need and especially going back in time lots and lots of data to really nail down what we think might be happening to cause, of course, these systematic eruptions of steamboat geyser all of a sudden. We know that Yellowstone has 60% of the world's geysers and over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. It's a supervolcano, after all. Now, he says you never know what you're going to learn because here it's so wide open, even though we've been studying it for 150 years, there's still a tremendous amount to learn here. He says geysers like Old Faithful and Steamboat erupt whenever water and steam get trapped in a tight spot deep below the geyser's blowhole. The mix of the water and steam builds up pressure until it finds its way to the surface where a tall stream of scorching hot water blasts hundreds of feet into the sky. And while the steamboat eruptions are no cause for concern, he says, Scientists do say that an eruption at Yellowstone Volcano is a matter of when and not if. One geologist is warning the next major eruption is close. According to U.S. Geological Survey, the chances of a Yellowstone eruption is near, on a yearly basis is 1 in 730,000. With 640 years having passed since the last major super eruption, Yellowstone is coming closer to exploding, but it could still be thousands of years away. Journalist Brian Walsh, who wrote a book called End Times, explores the various methods in which life on Earth could come to a, an extinction-level event. He says we're close to Yellowstone's next super eruption, and we're closer than we are distant, but that day, should it come, is still likely tens or even hundreds of thousands of years away. But when that day does come, there would be chaos across the United States and it, the uh, repercussions would be felt, of course, worldwide. Walsh wrote that earthquakes around Yellowstone would gradually increase in frequency and strength as the magma rushed towards the surface, exploding like champagne in a bottle covering the region with lava within a 40-mile radius. And this would be the beginning of destruction, Walsh wrote. He said Yellowstone, as we know it, would cease to exist. Okay. Look, okay, we have, uh, we've had the super eruptions, but you know, a lot of things, and I, I've meant to do it, and I haven't done it yet, I have to research more on it, having to do with what the geologists, uh, you know, decades ago found, that um, it's not just the lava eruptions, it's the hydrothermal eruptions that spouted out uh, all this ash and t that has turned into tuff, and, uh, you know, m um, uh, mountains full of ash, that have like sandy stuff that's turned into kind of a, a rocky solid um, that has to do with hydrothermal eruptions. 
And uh, a lot of these eruptions uh, brought out diatoms. The diatoms are very essential to Earth for our oxygen. They produce oxygen. And uh, they say that if we take two breaths, one of the breaths has to do with the oxygen that the diatoms have created on Earth. Okay, so there are such things called Yellowstone diatoms because of the explosions of Yellowstone uh, bringing out, you know, the, the, there are gases coming out. There are gas emissions coming out from volcanoes. One of them, if they are hydrothermal diatomic, they bring out oxygen as well. Usually, though, they bring out other gases such as carbon dioxide. Yellowstone has an emission of 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide on a daily basis, just from normal activity that we see today, yesterday, and last month, and last year. 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide every day. And uh, that's, of course, necessary for warming our planet. If we didn't have that, you know, we'd be, we'd be a frozen planet. So, you know, volcanoes do have uh, Im important functions that they do. Uh, it's like they're the radiators of our Earth. Anyway, uh, going back to this, uh, depending on the prevailing weather systems, the geologists say much of the Midwest would receive a few inches of ash if uh, there is a super eruption from Yellowstone. And that would fall like a black rain plunging regions into darkness. Alarm bells should not start ringing just yet because USGS reports the chances of a Yellowstone erupting is very tiny. It's 0.00014%. Now you'll notice that the ash clouds for, from Yellowstone eruptions, the 1.3 million years ago was a little bit lower, lower amount than Long Valley Caldera. But then you have the various increases uh, from the uh, bigger eruptions and the Toba of course 74,000 years ago was another super eruption and that caused a bottlenecking of humanity very few human pairs were left and uh, this is the primary ash zone as you can see in the secondary covering most of the United States from uh, past clouds as well also we have to remember that the increase in the earthquake activity in Yellowstone recently was because of the Ridgecrest earthquakes in July and also the increase in the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano in California. Those quake swarms are also the result of the Ridgecrest earthquakes from Ridgecrest, California in July. And they also took place 20 years ago when they had the last 7.1 earthquake, 1999. That also caused an increase in earthquakes in Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano and Yellowstone Supervolcano. And we know that uh, recently the uh, geologists have told us that the magma underneath Yellowstone is connected to a corridor that comes from a plume from under Baja, California, which is like a big Y. Uh, one, the right arm goes under Yellowstone and the left arm goes under Ridgecrest, Long Valley Caldera, the high, uh, very high threat volcanoes of the um, California area and w which are on the Walker Lane fault system. That all has the um, magma that is somehow connected to the body that goes towards Yellowstone. So uh, I guess that's why when Ridgecrest shakes, those areas also have quake swarms. Um, it's con because they, connect, they are connected by the magma underneath. I'll leave links, links below for you for this on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help 
economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota. And we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.